Welcome everyone to our panel discussion on the Universal Code of Conduct and the ratification of the enforcement guidelines. Today we have a panel conversation with three folks who are on committee members to share their experiences and insights into the process. Um, I'd love to start off by going around the room for everyone to introduce themselves and share a little bit about your involvement with the movement. Um, can we start off with Azoma? Hello, um, thank you Sally for having me. Uh, my name is Uzoma Uzurumba. Um, so I'm a co-founder of the Igbo Wikimedians user group. And um, I was also involved in um, the UCLC drafting uh, committee and also the um, enforcement guidelines uh, revision committee. Yeah, that's me. Um, I have nothing else to add. <laughs> thank you, Uzoma um, and Ruby. Okay, thank you so much, Sally. My name is Ruby Damishi Brown from Ghana, and I joined the Wikimedia community since 2019. And since then, it's been an awesome journey. I currently support an Open Foundation West Africa as a senior programs officer, and I volunteered for a credit number of things in the in the community and that includes the EduWiki Sub-Saharan Africa Regional Coordinator and also the UC UCOC Enforcement Guideline Committee member and I'm excited to be here to to talk to all of you yeah thank you Ruby and last but certainly not least Claudia hi everyone uh, I'm Claudia Lowe I am a senior design researcher at the Wikimedia Foundation and I do have to say um kind of my exposure to the Wikimedia community and movement did largely spring from my position as a staff member. Um, I am currently based out of the US. I had just moved to Chicago, but I grew up in Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, in my sort of capacity as a design researcher, I mostly support our anti-harassment tools team, our moderator tools team. And I'm generally focused on uh, working with product teams. Um, that focus very strongly on issues of community governance, trying to provide tools for administrators, but also just regular uh, editors to make their experience safer, a little bit more pleasant, and to allow them to kind of run the communities in the way that they would like them to be run. Um, and for this specifically, I was a member of both the UCOC Enforcement uh, Guidelines Committee, as well as the Revisions Committee. Thanks so much, Claudia, and thank you all for uh, participating in this panel discussion. So without further ado, I'm going to get started with some of the questions that we have here for you folks. Um, and the first one is, the UCOC was created to define a minimum set of acceptable and unacceptable behaviors. As long-term members of the movement, why do you think the existence of the UCOC is important? especially for small and medium communities. I'd love to start off by hearing some of Uzoma's thoughts. Thank you, Sally. So um, the existence of the UCOC, um, I believe would help the small and medium-sized communities uh, projects, if you uh, put it that way, to help them understand expected behaviors uh, with the understanding of what is expected and unexpected behaviors, the small wikis can build a healthy community um, early and also adapt the UCOC based on their lived experiences. So the, the, the small and medium-sized um, wikis, um, I would say they are um, fragile and also malleable. Um, they, they are fragile because um, they are the building and formation stage um, and they are mostly recruiting and retaining contributors. So issues of um, unacceptable behaviors can affect uh, and quickly turn their community into um, an unsafe environment that no one wants to be part of. So um, in the sense of being malleable, uh, because they are at the building stage, 
it will be easy for small and medium sized um, communities to adapt um, and adopt the, the UCAC, which will guide them um, towards building a culture that holds every member of the um, every member or contributor accountable to their behavior in the wiki space, um, which in the long run uh, will result in an atmosphere of trust, uh, inclusivity, and a safe environment for everyone to grow. So um, simply put, uh, UCOC uh, will help the small wikis grow a sustainable um, community faster and avoid unacceptable behaviors and their consequences. Uh, consequences that uh, some of the, um, so to say, old wikis have faced and maybe uh, some of them have been threatened by, um, I mean, their existence have been threatened by some of these um, unacceptable or unaccepted behaviors. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Uzoma. And I'd also love to hear some thoughts from Ruby on that question. And please feel free, if you'd like me to repeat the questions at any point, feel free to ask. Yeah, I I, I think Uzoma has said a lot on this and I'm, I really support what she's saying. And definitely that's basically what we are looking at. Um, the UCOC is, is a very important tool for our community and it helps to foster trust, um, safety and inclusion, make everyone who comes into the community safe. And so, especially for young, um, smaller uh, communities that are growing, we've, we've seen a lot of community spring up uh, in a short space of, space of time. This is a very um, important tool that they can easily adopt because some communities took years to come up with something like that and the work has already been done for you so all that you need to know is to adapt it and adjust it to your community and and this is a very great benefit that the UCOC um, gives to the community and I'll say that it also empowers small community because um, they'll be able to handle um, the dilemmas or situational dilemmas that they encounter they don't know how to go about it because uh, young communities are now exploring how to go about certain issues, how to handle certain um, conflicts in the community. So this is going to be like a guidance to sort of like help them to or empower them to handle such situations, which is a very good, uh, useful thing. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you both for sharing um, some insights, especially for the small and medium communities um, that we have out there and the benefits of the UCOC. I'm going to jump over to our next question, which is over the last several months, the revisions committee has worked diligently to integrate feedback from the community on the enforcement guidelines. What are some key reflections you have? And most importantly, why is the EG important? Um, would love to hear from Claudia on this one first. Uh, one of the really big principles I remember kind of trying to keep to throughout the revisions uh, process certainly was trying to make sure that we would write the guidelines in such a way to provide enough structure for wikis that maybe don't have a kind of history of sort of dealing with this, these kinds of situations, uh, already set precedent and already set methods on how to deal with them to provide structures for them to kind of take those first steps into how do we settle these kinds of disputes? How do we fairly enforce these guidelines across all of our many, many diverse projects while also respecting existing community processes, understanding that there are a lot of ways in which existing projects handle these things in ways that are slightly different from each other, but recognizing that all of them ultimately at the end of the day have that same aim of making sure, hey, we're all here to contribute to our projects in a healthy way that encourages and allows uh, participation from people in the way that they want to, in the way that they're most comfortable with, right? Um, so I think one of, the, one of the strengths of the enforcement guidelines, I would say, is that it gives everybody that same baseline to work with. And I think we, 
We did definitely try. And I will say I certainly tried uh, through my involvement in the process to kind of be aware of the fact that this is just a starting line, right? We want to set a common starting ground for everybody to get a sense of, okay, well, this is the minimum, right, of how we would like these guidelines to be enforced. If individual projects have ways of going kind of above and beyond, that's absolutely fine. Um, in fact, that should be welcomed. If people, you know, people should be able to take this baseline and say, okay, but we actually think that this should go even further for our projects because we believe even more strongly in these principles because they matter to us. Yeah. Thanks, Claudia. I really appreciate hearing, you know, your your insights uh, as being part of the the progression of the the UCOC. And we'd love to hear a little bit also from you, Ruby. What are some of your thoughts there? Yeah, I must say that it's been a wonderful journey, like reflecting on what we've done, um, a lot of feedbacks that were gathered in different spaces and different languages that were translated, you know, so that to bring us in a common ground when analyzing this uh, um, feedback and trying to incorporate it where necessary was very vital as part of the work that we do. And, and I believe that the enforcement guideline is a very important tool for the community to help us to know how to go about some of the situations that we face. Because I mean, the Universal Code of Conduct says that if you do this, if you do that, but how do communities practically implement, you know, this document set the space for that to happen, like tend to, um, bring people to that, uh, uh, it's sort of like a stepping stone in helping us uh, uh, bring that, uh, implement this universal code of conduct into, into the community. And one of the, some of the interesting thing is that we had to create scenarios and practically solve them, like put ourselves in those scenarios to analyze and that help us to better analyze some of these situation. We also made sure that um, that feedbacks, like we want to know where are the feedback coming from. And there was great analysis that were done to help us understand where these feedback are coming so that we're not just incorporating feedback from one community. We're trying to bring equity. And another amazing thing that I'll say that the committee also did in, in designing this enforcement guideline was the fact that we categorized it into topics. So if you look at one topic, you would see that okay, which communities are, have issues with this topic and how do we make sure that we're inclusive as much as possible in, in weighing all these uh, feedbacks that were coming, uh, what, that these concerns that were raised against this topic. So a whole lot of things were like reflecting back on what the community has done. It's amazing. And, and the community did amazing work providing us with very useful feedback and suggestions, which we now have like a very... Um, but of course, it's not perfect, like Claudia said. I mean, it's, we cannot have a perfect guidelines to move for on with. It would definitely be improved. Yeah. Thank you, Ruby. And, and Uzum, I see you agreeing and, 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 and echoing a few points that Claudia and Ruby have made. Do you have any thoughts to share as well in terms of some key reflections that you have in terms of the process or using community feedback to, to do the revisions? So um, nothing in particular, Claudia and um, Ruby uh, covered it all. Um, yeah, reminding ourselves um, that it is the baseline and the, the, it's just the baseline while considering uh, the feedback from people and the comments and all that. So yeah, that was really something we needed to um, uh, have at the back of our minds and work with yeah thank you thank you everyone for for um adding to that conversation there i'll jump over to our next question which is the ratification for the revised enforcement guidelines has begun on the 17th of january 2023 and will be open for two weeks why is it important for communities to vote on the revised enforcement guidelines slash why is it necessary in the UCOC enforcement process. Um, if we could start off with you, Ozoma, that would be great. And I'd love to hear from everybody on this question. Sure. So um, voting is one of the ways we make um, decisions binding 
in our movement. Uh, so um, really, if we don't vote, uh, we won't have these um, enforcement guidelines, uh, so to say. So um, without um, the enforcement guidelines, there won't be any form of um, accountability, uh, pathways and processes in our communities to tackle issues of unacceptable behaviors or even escalate them and uh, when they surface. So um, yeah, without the um, enforcement guidelines, the UCOC cannot be fully activated and it, uh, it won't be effective in our movement. Um, it is very um, important for everyone who is eligible to, um, to vote. Um, also having the opportunity to stand for what uh, you want in the movement gives a sense of uh, commitment and trust in the outcome. Yeah. Um, so if somehow uh, people missed out um, an opportunity to be heard either as an individual or um, a representative of a community, um, this is really a good opportunity to let um, your vote count. Um, yeah, let it count, even if um, even if you think that um, the UCOC is. Um, I, I mean, if you think if you have comments, I mean, if you think that um, you support, um, let your vote count. If you think that something needs to be updated, yes, um, leave a comment and also let it let, let it be uh, let it count. Um, I understand uh, some of the small wikis are busy and have commitments in our, in uh, daily lives that can hinder um, them from participating and in discussions around enforcement guidelines uh, in the past. Um, notwithstanding, uh, they revised the um, guidelines. Uh, is, this is a good opportunity to be heard and stand up for what will determine how safe and um, civil our projects will be in the future. Yeah, uh, just to summarize, um, we can't achieve a safe environment for us all to contribute without the enforcement guidelines. And uh, we, we can't have enforcement, uh, the enforcement guidelines if people don't vote. So it matters that um, we vote and let our, our voices count. Thank you so much, Uzoma. I really uh, enjoy hearing your, your thought process there and having your voice be heard. Um, Ruby, what are some of your thoughts? And then we'll we'll jump over to Claudia after, but what are some of your thoughts on why it's important for communities to vote in the revised enforcement guidelines and why you think it's necessary for the UCOC enforcement process in general? Yeah, so I, I would say that, um, this is a very important thing that the community itself wanted in the first place. And so um, this is a, a revised version of the enforcement guidelines. We had the first version, which community gave us a feedback and we went back to work several months to make sure that it's in good shape. So uh, we are here again, urging all community members to come out in their numbers, look, have a look at the revised version of the enforcement guidelines and come out and cast your vote because this is very crucial. Like Uzuma had said a lot about it. It's very important to help for us to implement the enforcement guideline because this is what is going to help the UCOC to be uh, uh, valid. I mean, like... <laughs> to really work well in the community, to provide a safe environment, that trust that we are, we've always been longing for. And we've always had major concerns when it comes to the small uh, communities, small wiki communities, you know, they, they're often like, um, my vote doesn't count, but look at, take a look at, we have like many small communities spread across the, the, the world. 
small wiki communities all over the world. If all of these communities come out in their numbers, they, are, they might be even powerful than maybe one big community that we've always uh, um, thought about. So we want to urge you all to come out in your numbers. Your voice will be heard. Your voice is important. Your vote is important. And of course, like Yuzuma said, um, we can't be perfect. This is a human society. The reality is going to be, it's going to, we're going to see the reality when we actually even enforce it, because then we're going to see how practically some of the solutions that we are even thinking around it uh, uh, can happen. Because, I mean, don't think about it to, to be perfect before you, you vote. No, <laughs> I'd encourage all of you to come out in your numbers to vote uh, and, and we can have that community or environment that we've always been looking for. Yeah. Thanks, Ruby. And, and we'd love to hear some of your thoughts, Claudia. Yeah, I mean, really just echoing everything Uzuma and Ruby have said already, it's important to vote. I think it's important to vote from an individual perspective that uh, this is, I really want to commend the, uh, the, the trust and safety team here in their effort in trying to involve as many communities as possible. So when we were really talking about, um, you know, we were trying to respect the community's wishes, that would not have been possible without the very diligent work of a lot of uh, translators and facilitators working in so, so many languages over such a long time, kind of really, really working around the clock to make sure not only were they relaying these questions, holding these sessions to try to gather community feedback and really give people a chance to voice their opinions and their ideas, but also to get all of that translated and then analyzed and sent back to us in a way that would be comprehensible for us that wouldn't force us to all spend 40 plus hours of our time every week uh, to, to try to digest all of this material, which is really important because, you know, aside from, you know, not, not everyone there is staff. A lot of people are volunteers. A lot of people have other obligations with their time. And so I found that process, uh, process to be very respectful of our time. So thank you very much. But all that is to say that I think throughout this process, we did try really, really hard to reach out to as many communities as possible, um, regardless of size, regardless of activity levels, regardless of, you know, maybe how active they have been in maybe earlier stages of the universal code of conduct, this whole process, or in other community consultations or sort of global movement-wide uh, conversations before. And I think that's part of what makes this uh, project really important and very uh, important to kind of get everyone's votes in and to get everyone's vo uh, voices heard, or at the very least to have your opinion logged uh, through, the, uh, through the vote on these enforcement guidelines. And yeah, just to reiterate, really, truly, it does not matter whether your home wiki is big or small, active, inactive, whether it's a Wikipedia, uh, a wiki source, a dictionary, all of that is important. All of that matters because these are going to be guidelines for all of us. Thank you, Claudia, for that perspective. Um, so I have a bit of a similar question, but um, it deviates just slightly. And it is, as you may be aware, past elections, board elections, and so forth, are usually dominated in representation by larger wikis. Why is it important for smaller communities to particularly participate in the ratification vote and to get their views interested represented in the vote? Um, again, a bit similar, but zoning in on the smaller community specifically. Ruby, what are some of your thoughts there? So um, I would say that um, for small wiki communities, that this is an opportunity for your voice to be heard because um, we shouldn't just let always let big communities decide for you. You have the power to also let your voice be heard. So that's all I'll say that this is a very great platform that has been provided for you. Most, most of the times we're behind and then we're talking behind, like wanting things to change by just being behind and saying things, but things don't change that way. You need to bring your voice. You need to um, know that we're here to, these things empower every community, allows you to 
let your voice to be heard. So this is what I'll say um, about that. I don't know if anyone has anything to say. Thank you so much, Ruby. And would love to hear from Uzoma or Claudia if you have anything to add to that. I know this was a bit of a, con a conversation we started earlier in the process, but if there are um, other points that you'd love to add, Uzoma, I saw that you unmuted. What are some of your thoughts? Yeah, so um, just to add to what um, Ruby said, it is, it, I mean, it's a simple process. Um, once you're eligible, all you need to do is go to the uh, voting page and support or post the revised um, enforcement guidelines. And um, if you're opposing, you leave a comment while you are. Um, it is not um, like multi-level voting that uh, has the complexities and all that. It's just um, a voting, um, a simple voting process. Um, all that is needed is uh, for the vote to be more than 50%, uh, I think. Um, that's um, for support. That's 50% support votes, more than 50% support votes for the enforcement guideline to, to pass. Uh, and so um, it's it's a huge advantage for the small wikis to at this point to um, take this opportunity and you know make the, make this something that would help um, build their community. So um, let's make our votes count, really. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia. I saw that you unmuted. Yeah, I just also wanted to touch back on with the caveat that A, I have not been, I am not as well versed in kind of the, the perspective coming from within the community looking at these votes. And I understand that there may be a history of how these votes have gone, but certainly I do know that one thing we were aware of and trying really, really hard to counter was the tendency to the easy tendency to fall back on, oh, well, because we're all speaking in English, let's go to places where English is already being spoken in the movement. Like I said, there was a huge, huge push to, you know, have facilitators in as many languages as possible to use both, you know, machine translation, but also rely on human interpreters and human translators, both from the movement itself, but also, you know, professional translators from outside the movement just to get, just to allow as many people as possible to express their opinions in the language of their choosing. And I think that's really commendable. And I think it would be a bit of a shame, honestly, if all of that outreach results in sort of people not processing in the vote because of perhaps a belief or a fear, however well-founded, that it's not going to count and or it's not going to matter. And I want to say that that is absolutely not the case. Um, it certainly, I think, was one of the things that preoccupied us was like making sure that we were paying enough attention, giving enough time and space to those concerns of smaller wikis, medium sized wikis, wikis that maybe don't have as like as a. Uh, uh, developed or as extensive a network of kind of this enforcement structures that they themselves may have already made to try to really, really uh, look at those perspectives and kind of understand them and understand those challenges and see how we can support them. Which is all to say, please, please come, please vote. I understand that the guidelines are a very long document. We're very sorry. We already went through several rounds of trying to make it shorter and trying to make sure that the language was, you know, as easy to translate as possible while still being really precise with the language. That was a huge, huge concern for us. I think we all remember those weeks. Um, and yeah, I would absolutely love to see a, a, a high vote turnout from all of our communities uh, when it comes to this round of voting. Thank you, Claudia, Uzoma, and Ruby for the importance of, of all communities coming out to vote um, and, and speaking a bit towards those smaller and medium-sized uh, communities. Um, really appreciate hearing all of your thoughts there. I'm going to move on to the, our next question, which is, as some of you may be aware, a Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Committee, known as the U4C, would be created to work on the enforcement guidelines. 
do you think the creation of such a committee is necessary? And um, Claudia, we'll, we'll, we'll start back off with you. So I was assured um, that it is an extremely Wikimedia community movement thing to conclude one committee by announcing we should create a second committee to keep going. Uh, but jokes aside, I think I would say one of the motivating factors I felt that was a really strong argument for creating, I know, yet another community uh, committee was that the us, the people in charge of writing the enforcement guidelines, should not be in charge of changing it. That it was really important to have a fresh set of eyes and a fresh sort of set of participants with different experiences, different backgrounds, different understandings of this problem and how to best solve it, should be allowed to take that next set of steps towards going, okay, how do we kind of nuts and bolts oversee the day-to-day -day how do we kind of translate these principles and these guidelines into day-to-day -day action and to how it would function on an everyday basis across the community? And also importantly, how do we build a mechanism that allows us to reflect on these uh, guidelines and to change them if necessary in the future? And I think, and I agree that it would not have been proper, I think, for the revisions committee members to kind of have that job as well as having created it originally. So I understand the frustration at making a committee after this committee, but I do think that there are good reasons for it. Thanks so much, Claudia. And what are some of your thoughts to that, Uzoma? Yeah, um, like Claudia said, um, you need a neutral body, or more like a final authority to handle the UCOC matters on a global scale, um, ensuring that uh, the code, the code of conduct is enforced and reviewed uh, to apply to peculiar issues that come up um, in the movement. Yeah, so um, I agree with I agree with um, Claudia and. Um, yeah, you, you can't. You can't just. Um, you need. You need um, a neutral body to uh, help with revisions, and also ensure that uh, the UCOC is being um, enacted, and everything is working according to plan and well adjusted to current situations or lived experiences. Yeah. Thank you, Zoma. And to dive into this question a little bit more um, and to stick with the U4C, what are some of the ways the committee can work collaboratively with existing local ARCOMs or admins? And I'd love to open this question up to everybody in the room. Um, so yeah, so diving in a bit more to the U4C, what are some of the ways the committee can work collaboratively with existing local ARCOMs or admins? Um, and maybe we could start off with um, Ruby, and then we can go around the room. Yeah, this is a very important um, question that you asked, and it's very important that um, the committee, the sorry, the U4C committee work collaboratively with the community to ensure that um, all these issues that come up as a movement, as we are, we've already been seeing around at Resolved Amicably, people get to uh, understand the, the right way to go about some of the issues because community needs also, also needs support, you know? So two heads is better than one. So coming together is very important, working together, helping each other to understand the different situations because, um, Without collaboration, we would not be able to understand some of the scenarios or situations that we come across. For instance, working as a committee, we came together <laughs> with different backgrounds, different perspectives. And this is what makes this document very rich because we are coming with different perspectives, trying to make uh, bring meaning to the things that uh, were documented because some of the things I wouldn't understand because it's coming the way that it was said, but because we had committee members from other regions, we were able to 
understand what the situation is like or what the person is saying. So it's very important that collaboration works in, in this situation to help us amicably resolve um, some of the situations that we find ourselves or we encounter. Uh, and, and, and that's what I'll say about it, yeah. Thank you, Ruby. And any thoughts from, from Claudia or Uzoma in, in terms of some ways that the committee can work collaboratively with exist, existing local ARBCOMs or admins? Claudia? Yeah, one of the kind of areas, one of the uh, areas of opportunity I really see for the U4C is kind of facilitating inter-wiki communication, especially where language barriers might be a problem. So one of the issues I think well, we've seen previously is that, you know, machine translation being widely available is really great, but it can only handle so much. And especially for cases like, uh, uh, you know, sensitive cases of abuse, of harassment, especially, you know, where, uh, where cases where a lot of nuance or understanding of context and history is really necessary. I hope that the U4C can be a useful bridge in kind of allowing global community to work collaboratively with each other to find solutions um, and to also maybe, you know, figure out previous uh, previous attempts to solve similar issues and kind of understand, you know, what worked well, what didn't work so well, in the hopes that communities don't have to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch every time. Uh, in these kinds of situations, especially as these cases might be time sensitive or be very complex and complicated. Um, yeah, I really hope that the U4C can help with some of this inter project uh, uh, communication and collaboration, uh, whether that's through providing language support, whether that's through giving a pathway for people to understand kind of the context behind situations or, you know, being a, a, a third party mediator or observer in these processes. Um, I think all of those things would be a positive development. Thanks, Claudia, for adding to that question. Um, Uzoma, any thoughts uh, to add to, to what these folks have said? Yeah, so um, the, the, the upcomes and um, admins uh, faced with uh, some of these uh, unacceptable behaviors, more like they're always on the front line with some of these issues. Um, so um, they'll be the best people to collaborate with the U4C. Um, and one of the things they can really do is um, to suggest or surface um, peculiar issues they encounter uh, to the U4C for consideration during um, scheduled revisions of the um, yeah, UCOC, yeah, because as time goes on, um, things come up and um, situations arise and all that. So there will be um, the best um, people to work with uh, the, the U4C uh, to suggest um, some of the newly encountered issues and also uh, provide context to um, understand how to go about incorporating these things to the revised um, UCOC um, at the appropriate time, yeah. Thank you, Uzoma, Ruby, and Claudia for answering that question. We're coming up to our last question, um, and I'm going to open this question up for everybody on the panel um, as well. And the question is, the Enforcement Guidelines Drafting Committee recommends that the Wikimedia Foundation develop an implementing training for community members with guidance from local communities and affiliates. Can you tell me more about the thinking behind having the foundation take the lead on this work? And we'll start off with Ruby for this question. Okay, thank you so much, Sally. Yeah, that's a very interesting question that community sometimes asks over and over again. And I, I would put myself as a scenario or maybe other volunteers that we work with. Volunteer have, most of volunteers have their um, 
full-time commitment and the volunteer for the movement as well. And when it comes to move, um, staff, affiliate staff and all, all, all of those groups, we also have work that we're doing. So a lot of things is happening in the movement and we want to make sure that volunteers make use of their time to the best that they can to the things that really matters to them. Like, I mean, like things that they are committed to so that they are not burdened, okay? The foundation have resources that are existing. They have staff already that are working on these things. And so this is a great opportunity to leverage on these staff to facilitate and coordinate. And, that, and that's what we've seen with Sally and her team doing amazing work because I can't imagine sending all those emails like <laughs> trying to bring everyone together, trying to schedule meetings. This is a lot of work. I've done that before. And I must say it's a lot of work. We cannot underestimate that and take it upon ourselves again. So it makes our work easy because all that we need to do is just get the update on the email, like know where we are meeting, when we are supposed to do this. And it's, it's well organized and it helps us to contribute because we all come here together as volunteers on this committee. But what's making as move on and making us contribute well organized is because we have this um, team that is supporting us, facilitating all of this conversation. Imagine, we can't even gather all the feedbacks from all of the countries. I can't imagine that. The foundation has the tool to do that, to translate all this conversation in the way that we, we can understand and make our contribution uh, while analyzing this, uh, um, enforcement guidelines. So I think we cannot do without the support of the foundation, which is very important. If And we cannot underestimate their support in, in this situation. That's all I can say, yeah. Thank you so much, Ruby. We'll go Uzoma and then we'll finish with Claudia. Uzoma, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, Ruby, Ruby really uh, had um, so much to share about this. So just to summarize, um, or just to, uh, you know, uh, echo what uh, Ruby said, the foundation has time, more time, uh, resources and um, money and expertise. So uh, with all this, we want to burden the volunteers too much uh, on these, as uh, their time is so valuable. And it's not that the UCOC is not, um, important to them or the UCOC matter is not important to them. But I mean, their time is valuable and it will be best um, channeled into other things than, um, not that they're not involved, but um, channeling it to other things um, more and um, allowing the foundation to, you know, take lead and um, do what they know how to do best. Yeah. so. That's that is that's what I'll say. Um, the foundation still remains um, the. I mean, the ex it has the expertise to carry on with the work. Thank you, Zoma, and would again love to hear from Claudia as well some of your thoughts around um, the thinking behind having the foundation take the lead on on this work here of the the training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very similar to Uzuma, what Uzuma and Ruby said, uh, part of that was resourcing, um, not only in terms of who, if, and I think I should say that like a, a lot of, the reason why that sentence is written like that is that the idea is that the, what the training is on should not solely be dictated by the foundation but the foundation has the obligation to take ideas coming from the community and turn that into a full training module. Because it's one thing to say we should, to pick an example, we should train administrators in digital security, you know, in case their accounts get hacked and in case you know, that poses a really big threat to their project. Great, that's a great idea. What digital security means and looks like for different people in different situations looks really, really different. Um, and I think it's really important to understand that. Um, and I think that the foundation being in charge of developing those uh, 
training processes, those modules, hopefully means that there is a better likelihood of them being um, supported into the long term. So hopefully that if somebody says, hey, let's develop a training on this topic, not only does that, it not only will that be given the resources needed to make it happen, that it will persist. And the year after it first runs, we can do it again. And the year after that, we can do it again. And that it can kind of have a permanent home, have a permanent group of people in charge of making sure it stays up and that it stays up to date to receive feedback and to refine it and keep it going. So part of what, you know, like the, the direction doesn't necessarily come from the foundation, but the boring, unglamorous legwork of making sure that those materials stay up stay relevant and stay accessible has a clear uh, group of people that are responsible for doing so. And I would rather have that burden placed on the foundation um, than to shunt it to volunteers who we already asked to do a lot, frankly. Thanks so much, Claudia. And and yeah, I'm definitely hearing a lot of distribution of labor um, and, and a lot of great insights from folks there. Um, Thank you all so very much for participating in this panel, for taking the time to share your thoughts and experiences. Um, and for all the folks that are listening, voting uh, started January 17th, 2023. So please uh, listen to what these folks have told, have spoke about, have shared their experiences with. Um, and again, a big thank you to Claudia, Uzoma, and Ruby uh, for sharing those insights. I hope you all have a great rest of your day um, and we will be seeing you all soon. Thank you. Please vote. Thank <laughs> you.